here for detention. Where is the teacher? Not here yet. Oh. I have three dollars. Feel free to share it with the others. Would you prefer a piece of paper? I have some in my briefcase. It's here if you change your mind. All right, losers, you know how this works. One hour, no talk and no horseplay. Sheldon? Hello, Mr. Givens. Why are you here? I didn't want to catch a cold from Miss McElroy, so I left her classroom without a hall pass. Well, something is going around. Actually, I actually had a little tickle in my throat. OK, time to go. Nice meeting you. What, what are you doing? You've heard of fight or flight? This is flight. Not so funny now, is it? No. How long is he suspended for? A week. And it goes on his permanent record. Well, that's no big deal. I had all kinds of stuff on my permanent high school record. Didn't stop me from being a bartender for eight years. I think the real issue we need to deal with is his germ phobia. Oh, yes, you don't want him turning into Howard Hughes, growing his nails out, peeing in a jar. Why would he pee into a jar? I don't know why he peed in a jar. I just know he did. I hate to say it, but I think we need help with this. Like what? Maybe we could take him to that nice doctor who calmed him down when he was convinced he had an enlarged prostate. She had not only calmed down when the doctor told him what happens in a prostate exam. Poor thing. Still talks about it. So pretty. What's going on? I'm not feeling so good. <clears throat> Biohazard! Biohazard! Sucker. Doctors say the strain originating in China is particularly severe. Children and the elderly are most at risk. Sheldon, are you still up? We're all gonna die! This isn't funny! I know, baby. I know. But you need to understand that sometimes the news says those things just to scare people. Well, it's working! Come here. I know you don't believe in this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Lord, I pray for my son Sheldon that you protect him from all illness and disease and keep him healthy and keep him safe and protect him from his head to his toes, inside and out. Amen. You're right. I don't believe in that. But it did feel good. Thanks. In the Bible, that's called a hedge of protection. Why do you keep smiling? You need to look at your mask, baby. Missy? Sheldon? Yes? The door's locked. Can you open it? No. What on earth? <laughs> Hello. What are you doing? I made a real germ-proof hedge of protection. Oh, well, honey, you can't stay in there. I've got a refrigerator, I've got my sleeping bag, and anything else I need I can make out of Legos. What's with the Halloween costume? In case of a breach. Stay right there. That's my plan. George! Just when you think he's gonna zig, you get a big old zag. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm gonna take it down. No, you can't force him out of a phobia. What do we do? We can't live in there. Well, actually, he can. He's got the refrigerator and a sleeping bag. And he can always go potty in the sink. I think I'll take the kids to school. I'm sure he'll be out by the time you get home. Not sure why you think that, but okay. Mom? Yes, yeah, Shelly? Can you close the door? I need to use the sink. <laughs> Tammy Cook? Here. Georgie Cooper? Here. Sheldon Cooper? Absent. Where's your brother? Home. Huh? Is he okay? Yeah, he's just... Actually, it's not looking good for him. He might not make it. Oh, that's terrible. I know. I love him so much. 
If anything ever happened, I don't know what I'd do. Aww. Shelly, if you don't mind me asking, what's your long-term plan here? I'm working on the math to turn the garage into a self-sustaining ecosystem. Okay, and what exactly does that mean? Well, all I need is sunlight and a few seeds to grow unlimited food, which I'll fertilize with my own feces. This just gets better. <laughs> if you're not going to help, please go inside. This is not a show. Now, that's where I disagree. <sighs> Shelly, baby, please come on out. I can't. Come on. I'm your mommy. Do it for your mommy. No. But I'm your mommy. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. <laughs> I'm your mommy. I think the saddest part about it is just how sad it is. Is there anything that we can do? I don't know. A hug might help. Of course. What's wrong with you two? Don't you care about my brother? <laughs> oh, Sheldon. That's it. I've had enough of this nonsense. If you don't come out, I'm coming in. One, two, three. Breach, breach. You come here right this instant. No. I do it forever just till you get tired. Mary, I'm on my way to go get my video camera. Don't get them till I get back. This is not a joke. Shit. Oh, I think I'm gonna wet myself. <laughs> Yeah, come here. Show me my Moonfire. I've got a little treat for you. Chocolate chip? Mm-hmm. Right out of the oven. Good. That means they're sterile. <laughs> Why don't you come on out here and have a couple? I can't do that. Okay, I tell you what. I'm gonna just put them right out here. And you can come out and get one when you're ready. How about that? I'm going to put them down right here. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Listen to me, Buster. OK. You are a lot of things, Sheldon. You are cute, smart, hygienic. But most of all, you are a Texan. So? So Texans aren't afraid of nothing. Rattlesnakes, Indians, the Mexican army. Do you imagine that Sam Houston was scared of a little old cold? No. Jim Bowie? No. Sissy Spacek? I guess not. You're damn right, because they're Texans through and through. Now I want you to quit hiding in this plastic bubble and I want you to come out here and eat your cookies out in the world like a man, like a Texan man. I'm impressed. Me too. I thought I'd lost him at Sissy Spacek. <laughs> Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. So kids, we have a little family business to discuss. You're pregnant? No. We're getting a puppy? No. I'm not sure I care. Starting next Monday, I'm going to take a full-time job at the church. Well, who's going to take care of us? Well, nothing will change in the morning. I'll make breakfast, take you both to school. Then after school, you'll come home, do your homework, watch TV, play with your toys till I come home around 6 o'clock. Well, why can't Mima take care of us? She's not the person you think she is. George? You're really going to leave this show alone? Yes. That's a brave choice. Look, this job is important to your mother. We expect you both to step up and be responsible. I can do that. Missy? I'm thinking about it. OK, let's go over it one more time. House keys under the plastic owl by the front door. There's after school snacks in the fridge. One for each of you. 
Emergency numbers are right there by the phone. First aid kit is in the hall closet. And you won't be needing it, but under the kitchen sink is a fire extinguisher. Ooh, that looks fun. For fires only. And don't be starting one just to use it. It's like she can read my mind. Don't worry, Mom. We'll make you proud. I know you will, baby. All set for your first day? I believe I am. Mm. Go get him. Thanks for waking me up. I woke you up 40 minutes ago. Well, you didn't do a very good job. Hi, y'all. Sorry to bother you, Peg. Is Pastor Jeff available? Jeff! You available? On the phone. He's on the phone. <coughs> You know, my mother's had some luck cutting back on the smoking by chewing that nicotine gum. Got some. Right here. So you do. Come on in. Go on, you heard him. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> hey, hey. Hey, Mayor. Uh, you finding everything you need? Oh, you bet. So, I've been going over the books, and I think we have enough money in our budget to purchase a personal computer to handle all the church business. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you leave the paperwork here, and I'll, I'll take a look at it. Of course. That's for your perusal. <laughs> Everything okay? What? Yeah. <laughs> right as rain. All righty. Hey, if you have a minute, I would love to talk to you about the sign out front. Yeah, sure. So far, so good. Hello? Anybody? They weren't kidding. I'll just have one little peek. How come you're not eating your snack? I prefer my snack to be a reward for homework well done. You're like an old person. Thank you. What's your homework? Non-Euclidean geometry. How about you? Synonyms. You mean synonyms. I'm pretty sure she said synonyms. Did you see that? Someone's out there. Oh no, they're in the backyard. What do we do? <laughs> Would one of you please get me a towel? So? So it's an emergency! Call Mima! Oh, calm down. We can take care of this. No, we can't! Sheldon, if we can't handle a little splinter, they're never going to leave us alone again. You're right. So what do we do? Let me see it. You did what you could. Oh, boy. That's a deep one. Hey, it's throbbing really bad. Mom will take it out with tweezers. Well, where would we find tweezers? Let's see what we got. Band-aids, cotton balls. What's gauze? It's gauze, and the fact that you don't know that is not filling me with hope. Where would Mom keep the tweezers? Sometimes she uses a needle on splinters. No, no needles. Anything but needles. Wait, she has tweezers in her makeup bag. She plucks her eyebrows with them. And sometimes her mustache. <laughs> Anything? Nope. Wait, maybe they're in her room. We're not allowed to go in Mom and Dad's room. Want me to get the needle? Let's make this quick. Why are you whispering? That's how people speak when they're being naughty. I wouldn't know. I'm naughty all the time. You're really not coming in? No, but you're doing great. What's wrong? This really is naughty. I told you. I don't see any 
anything. It's just a Bible and a flashlight. What do I do? Answer it, but sound calm. Hello? Hey, it's Dad. How you guys doing? We're great. Glad to hear it. I'm watching TV and children's reading quietly. I knew you could handle this. I'm proud of you. You know what? I'm proud of us, too. Uh, okay, baby doll. I'll be home in a couple hours. Stay out all night. We got this. We'll love you, too. That was intense. I don't think I'm cut out for this latchkey life. <coughs> you answer this time. I can't. I'm supposed to be reading quietly. Answer it, Sheldon. We're not going in there. Hello, Cooper resident, Sheldon speaking. Hey, Shelly. Oh, hello, Mom. How's your day going? Shelly? Shelly? Shelly, you there? Yes, I'm here. She wants to know how my day's going. Say it's going good. I can't say that. Why not? It's bad grammar. How are you supposed to say it? It's going well. Oh, that's nice. I've got to get back to work, but I love you and miss you very much. Okay. I handled that really well. What are you doing? I'm reading quietly so I don't have to lie about it later. Fandom. The tweezers? Mom's needles on their magnifying glass. Absolutely not. Let me at least try. No. You're being a baby. Nothing you can say will change my mind. What if it gets infected and turns green and they have to cut it off? I think it's numb. Great, put your hand out. Wait, how do you plan on sterilizing the needle? Mom uses a lit match. We're not allowed to play with matches. What else would work? Alcohol. Stick your finger in there. I'll do the needle. Okay. I hope I don't get drunk. How long till you're sterile? I don't know, but I'm getting lightheaded. No matter what happens, hold still. I can't do it. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Just let me get it. What if you slip and stab me in the eye? I'm not gonna slip. Who always wins when we play? Be right back. In 1989, the Milton Bradley Company had dozens of board games on the market. But only one where you were the doctor. Operation came complete with a red light-up nose, 13 plastic body parts for players to remove, and most importantly, one pair of genuine tweezers. My sister performed a medical procedure using a children's board game while I bravely sat very still. Hello? In here. Why does the kitchen smell like whiskey? Ask her. Oh, dear Lord! Wait till you hear what I did to me, Ma. And the winner of the Medford High School Science Fair is... Sue Ann Ludlow! You've got to be kidding me, Shelly. You people are crazy! All right. You're celebrating mediocrity! 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 I'll be in my room. Oh, come on, Shelly. You still got an honorable mention. Stop reminding me. Oh, I hate to see him so upset. Well, give him a little time. He'll calm down. Fatal battle! The F word. <laughs> He's real mad. You don't always win in life. He needs to learn that. I know, but these are big feelings for a little boy. They're feelings everybody has. It's part of growing up. I guess. Poodle poo! Somebody's got to teach this kid to swear. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Sheldon, listen, I know losing ain't easy. I deal with it on the football field all the time. <laughs> it's like that big gate we had last year against Nacogdoches. We were down 28 points at the half. It was raining, it was muddy, everybody in the stands had gone home. But somehow, 
we managed to claw our way back to a tie with a minute left. Then they threw a Hail Mary, and the receiver stepped out of bounds. The ref didn't see it. After all that, we lose on a bad call. Believe me, I was furious. But I sucked it up, and I walked across that field, and I shook their hands. I didn't hear a word you said. Okay. Sheldon, what are you doing? Being disrespectful, sir. Uh, how come? Because I'm disillusioned with the school system. Georgie, do you know what's going on with him? Actually, I'm trying to ignore it. Well, get your feet off the desk. What if I don't? I was sent to see Principal Peterson. What is it this time? Youthful rebellion. My voice hasn't changed yet, but my attitude has. I'll let him know you're here. You do that. Sheldon Cooper's outside. Who sent him now? Givens. Well, you know what? Givens needs to man up. Cooper's a little boy. It's not hard to handle him. I'll send him in. Oh, hold on a minute. Does he know I'm in here? Attention, students and faculty. Oh, no. This is Sheldon Lee Cooper. What the hell? We're taught that hard work pays off, but that's not true. I came up with a solution to save Earth from killer asteroids and lost the science fair to Sue Ann Ludlow and her frizzy hair machine. But it wasn't just me who lost, we all lost. Wake up, people. The system's broken. Real innovation isn't valued. Nowadays, it's all about flash and style. I blame MTV. Luckily, my parents can't afford cable. We can afford it. I urge you all to rise up. They can't send everyone to the principal's office. Chew gum in class. Use a number one pencil. Go nuts. This is Sheldon Lee Cooper signing off. Live long and prosper. You better run, you little punk. Georgie, how was your day? My brother told the entire school we can't afford cable. Oh, right. Missy? Good until I learn we can't afford cable. I've been thinking, and there's something I'd like to say. Unless it's an apology, I don't want to hear it. I'm quitting science. Not an apology. Spank him, Dad. Hey, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for seeing us on such short notice, Doctor. Oh, not a problem. <laughs> Sheldon, I remember you. Do you remember me? I remember everything. Okay. Uh, you two make yourselves comfortable. Me and my main man, Sheldon, are going to go have a little chit-chat in my office. I don't like chit-chat, and I'm not your main man. Right on. Now, Sheldon, I understand you've changed your mind about being a scientist. And you're going to say I can't? No, I think that's great. You do? Yeah, I think it's important to keep your options open. Let me tell you a little story about an extremely smart young boy. Me? Me. For the longest time, I thought I was going to be a professional figure skater. And then you became disenchanted with the field like I did? Exactly. Someone skated right over my foot, and that was that. I'm not sure that's the same thing. I'd say you lost your passion the way I lost my big toe. Hmm. Hey, we're all done. How'd it go? Great. I feel a lot better. Well, that's just wonderful. So you're going back to science? No. In fact, I'm going as far away from science as possible. I plan to pursue the arts. What kind of arts? I've decided to become an actor. Of course you have. He starts behaving himself in school, I don't care what he does. You know, I actually did a little community theater back in my 20s. Is that so? I had a good part in Oklahoma. I'm just a girl who can't say no. Say no to what? Well... To, uh, eating her vegetables. It was fun. But I'm pretty sure doing plays is just an excuse to change in front of each other backstage. Really? Yeah. Theater folk just love to take their clothes off. How many people saw you naked? A lot. Both? Enough. Y'all don't understand my sense of humor either. Why aren't they all singing? Because it's a musical. But why can't they just say it? Well, that wouldn't be very musical, would it? And where is the music coming from? You're thinking about it too much. And how do they all know the same dance? Come on! All right, Mr. Cooper, the stage is yours. Thank you. I'd like to begin with a monologue from King Lear. 
What? I believe you're supposed to say break a leg. Sorry. Break a leg. Poor naked wretches, wheresoever you are, that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm. How shall your houseless heads and unfed sides, your looped and windowed raggedness, defend you from seasons such as these? Oh, I've tamed too little care of this. Take physic, pomp. Expose thyself to feel what wretches feel, that thou may shake the superflux to them and show the heavens more just. Holy mackerel. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. All through my wild days, my mad existence, I kept my promise. Don't keep your distance. I was a little unsure at first, but Sandy Duncan does play Peter Pan, so when you think about it... Johnny, you're not helping. Okay. Hey. Hello. I want to talk to you about this play. I'm excited about it, too. You know, if you play the part of a girl, people might make fun of you. Mr. Lundy's trying to push the boundaries of drama in East Texas. One way to do that is cross-gender casting. Let me rephrase that. If you play the part of a girl, people will make fun of you. In Shakespeare's time, the men played all the female parts. No one made fun of it. If Shakespeare went to public high school, it would be a different story. You know, Sandy Duncan plays the part of Peter Yeah, Pan. yeah, I heard it. <sighs> I'm trying to protect you, son. I appreciate that. Good. You're a football coach. Isn't it your responsibility to put in the best player for the job? I guess. Well, I want to do this. And Mr. Lindy said I was the best. Okay. Can you at least wear pants instead of a dress? I'll give you a definite maybe. What are you doing, Mr. Cooper? You in touch with your inner Annie? I believe so. Good. It's a packed house. <laughs> but, oh, what the heck, Katie? Katie, you're an orphan, sweetheart, not a coal miner. Let's tone that down. Oh, dear. I can't do this. What are you talking about? The play. I can't do it. There are too many people out there. Oh, that is just stage fright. That's completely normal. No, this is a full-blown panic attack. All right, all right, listen to me. You're feeling scared. I get that. But what you have to understand is you're not going out on that stage alone. Everybody, gather around. Mm -hmm. uh, Shona, have you ever been to the circus? Yes. Okay, good. I had a panic attack there, too. My point is... The trapeze artist always performs with a net to catch him, to protect him. And you are protected by everyone standing here. Nothing can happen to you out on that stage because we're a team. We are your net. I don't know. Sheldon, come here. You are a star. And that audience deserves to see you shine. Hop down, all of you. Go back to sleep. It's all right, Molly. Annie's here. Oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. What's my line? Come at me. Like, why not you? Well, I'm new to this, so maybe just walk quickly. 
And what happens when I get to you? I'll use your inertia to take you down. Okay. Hit it! And when does inertia take me down? Any second. I got an idea. Now I want to say You don't like it, so what? I don't care. I don't understand. I'm using physics. This leg lock is called an outside ashigarami. What happens next? That depends. Is this your foot or mine? Cooper! You will stop. Would you mind dropping me off closer to my house? You know I'm not allowed to do that. What if I did your taxes? Sorry, kiddo. I could have gotten you a nice refund. Shelly, you all right? Yes. I must be a little sore from doing jujitsu with Tam yesterday. Why were you doing jujitsu? We're boys. Roughhousing is what we do. What was that? What was what? That sound. What sound? What's all this? An extra layer of protection. Protection from what? Sweetie, is someone bothering you? Yes. Who is it? I'd rather not talk about it. No, I want a name right now. Mary? Have you been hurting him? Only with my words. Tell me who it is, Shelley. Mary, slow down. Don't tell me to slow down. Someone is bullying him. Okay. Okay. Sheldon, you can't go to school wearing all that. Go to your room and take it off. Yes, sir. You go with her. But my cereal is going to get soggy. No! I'd like one nice morning. Why aren't you more upset about this? I am. I just think we should proceed with caution. Someone is hurting our son. I understand, but handling bullies is tricky. It, it's easy to make things worse. And what makes you the expert? Honey, I was a bully. He's right. You get involved in this in the wrong way and... They'll take it out on Sheldon. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't just stand by. Georgie, I need to talk to you. And wake up, you're gonna be late. Got it covered. I slipped my clothes. Somebody has been picking on your brother. You know anything about it? Nope. You better not be covering for anybody. I'm not. Most kids at school ignore him, and the girls all think he's cute. It's kind of annoying. Well, I need you to look after him. Why? Because I'm your mother, and I'm asking you nicely. What if I don't want to? I don't care. You're doing it. How was that nice? So there I was, flying above the city. But when I woke up, I couldn't fly. That's like the dream you had where you were dating Madonna. When you woke up, you weren't. Exactly. You ever had the ones where your teeth are falling out? Better my teeth than my hair, but... Sheldon? Over here. What are you doing? Hiding. From who? Is Billy the one giving you trouble? No. His dad? No. No. She's a demon. Little Sparks girl? Your kid. She seems so sweet. He says she slaps him around, takes his lunch money. She even put a tadpole down his shirt. Poor kid. He tucks in those shirts. She looks harmless. She's cute, so she probably gets away with stuff. I'm like that. 
Wonder if stray cat's poop in that sandbox. George, you need to talk to her parents. Me? Why me? Because you're more intimidating than me. That's rich. Hey, Billy. Hello, Missy's dad. Is your father home? Yes. Could you get him for me? Happy to. Dad, it's Missy's dad. He's also shown dad. Well, howdy, neighbor. Hey, Herschel. What brings you by? Chicken still out? Uh, no, I'll leave him fine. Good, good. Fried up the noisy one last week. That shut him up. Anyway, how can I help? Hey, well, it's come to my attention that uh, Sheldon's run into a bit of trouble with your daughter. Well, what kind of trouble? He says she's been beating on him. My Bobby? Yeah. This one, the six-year-old. Bobby, get over here. You realize I'm taking dumps bigger than this kid. Hi, Daddy. Hey, baby doll. Uh, Mr. Cooper says that you've been picking on Sheldon. Now, is that true? No, Daddy. Are you sure? Okay, go wash up for dinner. I don't know what to tell you, George. I mean, is, is it possible your son has a little crush on her? Oh, I don't think he's wired that way. Oh, are you saying that he's... No, a... no, I'm saying he's a bookworm. <laughs> yeah, unless she's math or a dictionary, he ain't interested. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for hearing me out. Your wife sent you over here, didn't she? I won't talk about it. <laughs> I bet she did. Not talking about it. You told her I said hi. <laughs> How'd it go? Uh, good, good. I handled it. Oh, thank the Lord. Yeah, me and the Lord. Team effort. <laughs> Hello, Bobby. You told on me. Well, actually, my brother figured it out, so technically I would argue that I didn't. Doesn't matter. Uh, I should let you know, I read a book on jujitsu, and I'm prepared to throw it at you. Shelly, it's just back team. Ah! I didn't even put it on you yet. You want to tell me what happened? Bobby Sparks came into the garage. And she attacked you? Not exactly. I tried to use jujitsu on her, but I tripped and fell. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry you're having to deal with this. It's okay. German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche said, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. Do you feel stronger? No. How are the knees? Better, thank you. Good. And regarding this jujitsu stuff, you should know that a man's not supposed to raise his hand to a woman. Oh, I won't. I don't want to hurt myself again. Did you ever have a bully when you were growing up? Have you met your grandma? I thought you said you handled it next door. I did say that. Where are you going? To handle it. Should have been you in the first place. What? Good luck. Missy, I could really use your help. With what? I'm being bullied by Bobby Sparks. Hilarious. Go on. Mom says a man should never raise his hand to a woman, but I believe I found a loophole. You're a woman, so you're allowed to hit her as much as you want. Why would I do that? Because I'm willing to pay you. How much? My life savings, four dollars. That's a good start. Now let's talk TV privileges. What do you want? Complete control every afternoon for two months. That's when Professor Proton is on. I know, sucks for you. Hello, Brenda. Oh, hey, Mary. How many lanes do you need? Actually, I'm here to talk to you. Seems that our kids are having a little problem. Well, yeah, Herschel told me. Oh, good, good. So I was wondering what you're planning to do about it, because the situation doesn't seem to be getting any better. Well, if you haven't noticed, I'm at work right now. I see that. But you understand that your daughter's being abusive to my son. Well, maybe your son needs to grow a pair. And in due time, he will. But right now, I expect you to teach your children how to behave. Connie Tucker to the front desk, please. Connie Tucker. 
Why are you calling her? You say my daughter's harassing your son. Well, her daughter's harassing me. What are you doing here? Well, I was hoping to have a rational conversation about Shelly, but it, there's only one person being rational, <laughs> and it ain't you. Could you excuse us for just a minute? Do you understand that you are in the place where I socialize three to four days a week? So you care more about bowling than your grandson? Well, of course not. I'm just saying maybe there's a better way to go about it. Now, I'm warning you, Brenda is one mean... I know you don't like bad language, but we are in a bowling alley. One mean bitch. Well, I can be mean, too. Okay, you listen to me. You get your kid in line or I... What are you doing? Get out of here. This is my place of business. And now I see where your daughter gets it. You know what? I have been nothing but nice to you and your family since the day y'all moved in. And I'm over it. Watching you walk around all holier than thou, like you're better than everyone else. Well, guess what? You're not. I'm gonna pray for you. She says that to me all the time. I'm not even sure she does it. Gotta go. I don't want to talk about it. Is that pine? We're not talking about it. And you get that? Herschel? Hey, George. It has come to my attention that your wife went to speak with my wife at her place of work, and, uh... Did she send you over here? Uh, the, the important thing is that I'm here to tell you that, uh, Mary's behavior was inappropriate. You know, it's interesting. When I came to your house, you were laughing, and now you're all serious. Why is that? What do you say we go talk about this somewhere a little more comfortable? Make yourself at home. You hang out in here? Sure. Once you get used to the smell, it's not so bad. <laughs> I coach high school football team. This smells like petunias. <laughs> I like to take a break from the family and come out here and watch the games. Ooh. <laughs> Your wife don't mind? She don't know. She's scared to death of chickens. Is that right? Once I found out, building this coop was a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> You were gone so long. How did it go? Well, one number two. Two, please. Billy? Why would I want Lumpy T? Isn't he pretty? Very pretty. I feel pretty. I handled it. Well, thank you so much. We're family. What we do? <laughs> mm. Listen, I'm sorry my wife went down the bowling alley. Please. I'm sorry Brenda made me come to your door. I'm not. It's the most fun I've had all week. <laughs> I, I feel bad about the whole thing with the kids. Hey, it happens. I know, but Bobby shouldn't be beating on Sheldon like that. It's not okay. What's not okay is Sheldon getting beat up by a little girl. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I'll talk to Bobby. I don't know if it'll help, but I'll try. Hey, you're a good man. Mm. There, I should be heading back. Mm. All right, well, look, come on by anytime. Yeah. You know, we should probably get our story straight before we talk to our respective mates. Sure. Uh, what do you want to say? How about this? We had words. It almost got ugly, but we came to an understanding. I like it. Yeah. You want to take a swing at me? Make it look real. I have a freakishly high tolerance for pain. No, no, but you're sweet for offering. You have a good night. You too, pal. <laughs> Herschel! Where the hell are you? Shh. I built a hidey hole under here, but there's only room for one of us. Where is that fat dumbass? Believe it or not, that means I'm getting lucky tonight. Y'all have an odd relationship. Love is a mysterious thing. go to college. Okay. What are you thinking? 
Somewhere with a good science program, but far enough away to make my mom cry herself to sleep every night that I'm gone. You're applying to college out of spite. I see where you're the guidance counselor. Okay, let's see. What about Caltech in Pasadena? I can't see myself living in California. I don't trust their carefree lifestyle. Okay. Uh, how about MIT in Boston? Do they have a strong physics program? They're more of an engineering school. Next. There's always Harvard. Hmm. I don't like cold weather, but I do look good in maroon. All right, Harvard it is. Thank you for your help. Are you interested in applying to a safety school in case you don't get in? Safety school. You're funny. How's adult life treating you? Very well, actually. I'm working on my application to Harvard. Is that so? Yes, and I'm planning on transferring there as soon as possible. You're not going away to Harvard. I don't believe you have a say in this. Okay, well, Harvard's real expensive. How do you plan on paying for it? Oh, I'm sure I'll get a scholarship. Oh, are you? Yes, I am. I just realized something. College applications cost money just to send in. They do? Fifty, sixty dollars a pop. I don't believe you have that kind of money, do you? I would like to apply for a job. You would? Yes, I need to earn money so I can apply to Harvard. I thought about going to Harvard, but then I realized the shack is my passion. So can I work here? Excuse me, how much RAM does this computer have? Uh, I can check on that for you. It comes with 640 kilobytes, but it's expandable up to 768. Well? Do you even have a resume? No, but I have a report card that'll knock your socks off. It wants to process the speed. It has the Intel 8286, so 10 megahertz. <laughs> Sorry, Sheldon. I think it's against company policy to hire little kids. But people say I'm like an old man all the time. Hey, I'm one of them, but the answer's still no. Mimo. Hey, looking sharp. You're not going to try to sell me a set of knives, are you? No. It's a joke. Because of the suit. Okay. I need money for my Harvard application and was wondering if there are any jobs I could do. Hmm. My yard could use a little weeding. I'm not terribly fond of outdoor work. Plus, that garden gnome terrifies me. Ernesto has that effect on people. How much does the job pay? Well, let me think. How about a dollar an hour? How about five dollars an hour? How about 50 cents an hour? Wait a minute. What just happened? I tell you what, I give you a dollar. Thank you. Feast your eyes. You did all that? I did. You shoved everything in the closet, didn't you? Take a look. Well, I am impressed. You should be. There may be hope for you yet. Come home with me. No, I'm working. There is a tornado watch. Let's go. Oh, come on, Mary. We've had a watch every day for two months. Nothing ever happens. I think you're just worried I'm earning the money to send in my college application. I am worried it is not safe out here. Let's go. I can worry about my own safety, thank you. I don't care if you think you're an adult. I'm your mother and you will do as I say. Well, that ain't good. You believe me now? <laughs> Mom? You have you a watch? I just don't think this part applies to me. That's fine. Be quiet and listen. Well, I'm only nine years old. Most evil doesn't start till puberty. <laughs> Hello. Do you have you a watch? I'm having one right now. Really? What is it? When we get home, I'm gonna kick your little balls. Can't. They haven't descended yet. <laughs> 